Oh, hello. Just cutting up some Brussels sprouts. Um, oh, hang on. I think I hear somebody at the door. Coming. Somebody trying to show me. So, the perfect vegetable broth that you can use for many things. First, we'll start with two carrots diced, two celery diced, one small, one small golden beet. Two cloves of garlic. About half a cup or a handful of parsley, fresh parsley, stalks and all. One onion, chopped. Some spritz of thyme, dried thyme. I, I grew this in my garden and I so that's pretty cool, right? Three bay leaves, but since they're small, I'm putting in four. Four cloves. And ten peppercorns chopped up, well, smashed up. There we are. Six cups fresh water. Okay. So, we're going to bring this to a boil and then we're going to simmer for about half an hour and when it's done you will be amazed. Check it out. And simmering for about half an hour. See that? Beautiful, eh? Nice and golden. I, I, I like this broth because it's very versatile. You know, I've used it to make gravy. You know, you add some butter, some flour, make a roux. You maybe add some, you know, bisto if you want and two cups of broth and you can whisk it until it's the thickness that you're like I like it a little thick and as they say and as the line from from uh, City Slickers it's hot it's brown and there's plenty of it I'm going to take this and drain it and then I'm going to puree the rest of these uh, vegetables and that can serve as something as well I tried to make a flatbread with it didn't work out so well but I have some other ideas we'll get to that okay so I'm going to strain this. Down. I'll pull out 
the bay leaves before I do anything else. Well, trust me, I will. <laughs> Push that down, get all that ooey gooey goodness out of there. <laughs> leaf one more bay leaf in there somewhere I'll find it and there you have it look at that beautiful so I'm gonna rest this when it cools down I'll put it in a freezer bag and it yields about this much it's about maybe almost four cups of, of broth which when I'm making uh, basil spaghetti that's just about right so oh, on to the next move I moved all the bay leaves trust me and now I'm going to puree this I'm, I'm going to puree it in two different batches because it's a lot to fit in this one this one blender We can chalk it up in cumin. I'm okay with that. Because we are all flawed in some way. Hence, making everyone as perfect as everyone else. If you get that. Alright, I think that's it. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. As you are probably aware, the cleanup is the hardest part. Not the waiting. <laughs> and that actually makes a lot, doesn't it? It's like, like a whole lot of, of pureed vegetables. And why let it go to waste? I have some ideas, uh, things I'm going to try with this. That will be in the next segment. It may not be today, but as far as you're concerned, watching this, it's it's right about now. Here we are at step two. I have some leftover puree. I'm going to use uh, two cups of of the leftover puree. I'm going to make a leftover loaf. Okay, so I need. Uh, let's see. Oh boy. I need two tablespoons of. All porpoise flour. One, two. Half a cup of breadcrumbs. Two eggs beaten. Put in our puree. Okay. And, oh, some sauteed onions. I don't think I'm going to use them all there. Let's see. A bit of vinegar. That's a splash. Alright. And I'm going to use hoisin. I know. Hoisin sauce. Just a little bit because it's kind of salty, right? A little bit of that in there. Okay. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to whiz this. Whisk this up. This is kind of based on the, the lentil nut loaf. I thought, you know, I can do this. I'll just, you know, change it up a little bit. Use, use some of this leftover puree. So hence the, the name of the, oh, I think I might have to put a little bit of flour in there. Because this is a little moisture than cooked lentils. That's something to consider always. I'm engaging in these sort of things. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. <laughs> oh, yes. I will just use a spoon. All right. All right, 
looks like it's going to work. Should I put walnuts in? Yes. Let's do that. Throw a few walnuts in there. For the hell of it. So now I'm going to take some butter. Now, although this is supposed to be a non-stick pan, you know, in my experience, that isn't always so. So a little butter around the edges and on the bottom help to smooth things out. All right. Okay, so I have my oven set for 180 Celsius, or that's 350 Fahrenheit. So, I'm going to take our mixture, put it in the pan. seeds on there. Uh oh, got butter on my fingers. I hate when that happens. Butter fingers. Okay. There we are. I'm going to cover that. Okay, so we cook it for 30 minutes covered and then 10 minutes uncovered so, so for, for a total of 40 minutes let's, let's start okay timing it right now and we'll be right back in the meantime I'm gonna make some fritters well I'm going to attempt it so let's see we'll take a bit of this puree that much and right now I'm going to use almond flour I prefer chickpea flour but this is what I've got I had some of that I'll mix up I'm going to toss in one egg All right And a bit of paprika. Bob's your uncle. I think I might need some more flour. Alright, why don't I turn my, my, my pan on, get that going, and we'll, we'll be back. Okay, my pan is hot, put in some oil, and we're going to start. I'm going to make them really small because I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. So there's one, two, three, four. Oh, one's a little bigger than the others, but it's okay. Good experiment. Flatten them down a bit with a fork. And we'll let them cook on each side for about maybe a couple minutes. See what happens. This is new, I haven't tried this yet. First time on camera. All right, turn it over. Hmm. 
you know, a little more moist than I would have liked. But, hmm, interesting. Sometimes that is what a fritter is sometimes, right? Well, so all these wonderful things that I've been able to make with the leftover puree. I have a leftover loaf in the, in the oven, making the fritters, and later on I'm going to make some, some uh, basil spaghetti using uh, the broth that I made. I know that works because I've done that before, and it tastes and smells fantastic. All right, time to uh, put this one on over here. Oh, that one's broken a bit. Hmm. Well, yeah, that one broke. No problem. Three out of four. <laughs> All right, let's put this on the plate. Some more happening here. Same thing. Oh, that one's going to be a little one. <laughs> okay, cool. See how they look. Not bad. Right? Not too bad. Let's open it up. Not bad. Taste it. Hmm. Hmm. Very nice. Wow. Hmm. That is quite tasty. Wow. So the paprika added a little something to it, but it's okay all by itself. Wow. So, there you have it. Try this. You'll like it. Wow. Looks like it worked. Get a gander. All right, so. Let's take a toothpick in there. It comes out clear. What means it's done. And it did. Oh man, oh man, this is gonna be good. I'm not gonna try and turn it over because I know how that goes. <laughs> but, looks like it was a success. I can hardly, I'm, gonna let, I'm gonna let it cool down a bit and I'll let you know how it turned out. Okay, let's cut into this baby. Take a look at it. Oops. <laughs> bit moist yet. It's still a bit warm. If I let it sit a little more, it'll probably be better. But Oh, I am impressed. Oh my God. Look at it. it smells really good. Let's taste it. I'm glad I put those nuts in there. It gives a little bit of crunchiness. But the rest of it is so moist. Mm. I'm sure if I let this sit a while and refrigerate it, it'll be perfect. Not bad. There you go. Something else you can do with the leftover puree. So this is what I call my leftover loaf. It's the first time I've tried this. And I tried it on air 
or on on camera so that you can see it. So if it was a mistake, I would still let you know. This was not a mistake. This was really good. All right, if you like that, leave a like down below. I'll leave a, a recipe in the description for this and for the basil spaghetti, which won't be part of this video. I'll just put a, I'll give you a send, give you a picture and then I'll leave you the recipe. You don't have to see me cook spaghetti. All right, later. Welcome back. Basil, tomato, spaghetti. I'm not gonna bore you with the prep and cooking of it. I'll just add a bit of video and some pictures at the end. But what I like to do with this, I like to break the spaghetti in half. Find it cooks faster. I know, it's because I'm a... Manja cake. That's right, manja cake. Well, anyway. So this is not an original recipe per se. It's something I, I discovered some years ago, and I've I've been, I've since you know improved it a bit. These days I cook it with the the broth I cooked earlier, and it is fantastic. So the recipe calls for four four and a half cups of broth. Now the broth that I made makes exactly four cups. So I'll just add a half a cup of water plus all the other ingredients. And actually, my wife really likes this one, so I have to make it. Anyway, I'll let you know. You'll see. Talk to you later. Thank you. Have a good day. Tomato basil spaghetti. Beautiful. Basil, onions, tomatoes. Oh, beautiful. Okay. 10 to 20 minutes.